uh, I feel like I haven't done this in a while, but I just did this not too long ago. Anyways, um... Hey guys, it's Yadi, Jotty, Yari, Jari, whatever you want to call me because no one can seem to get it right these days. So today I'm going to get to the point and let you guys know 10 reasons why your hair isn't growing or feels like it's not growing or you just feel like you can't get it past a certain length. I'm just going to let you guys know that these aren't all the reasons why your hair isn't growing. Like there's a lot of factors that go into hair growth, but these are just a few that I've noticed that a lot of people need to know over the past few years and it'll help you out a lot, I think, in my opinion. So let's get into it. Okay, so I've got some notes written down on my phone. It's everything you guys need to know about it. The first reason is genetics. I know you guys don't want to hear it. I know you don't want me to say it, but it's the truth and it plays a really big role in your hair growth and how long it can grow. Before I get into it, let's talk about the three phases of hair growth. Catagen, anagen, and telogen. So catagen is the beginning of hair growth in a strand. Anagen is the resting phase of the strand and telogen is, you know, the phase when your hair falls out. So at any given time, 90%, 90% of your hair is in the anagen phase. And this stage lasts, it can be between two to seven years before your hair gets into the falling stage, which is telogen, the last stage of the hair cycle. Now, the length of your hair, how much your hair is going to grow, is determined by how long your hair is in the antigen phase. And the amount of time that your hair is in the antigen phase is determined by... Can you guess? <laughs> Genetics. <laughs> because of that, your hair will most likely always fall out once it gets to a certain length. Now, I will say there are a few lucky ducks out there who can get their hair past a certain length, even though it's in their genetics. So, um, yeah. The second reason can be it's damaged or it's overprocessed or you've been dyeing it too much. Whether it be color damage, heat damage, or not trimming your ends long enough, it can be any of those. What I will say is that Olplex helps a lot. If you guys have never heard of Olplex, you need to go look it up because it will save lives. I'm just letting you know, it's gonna save lives. Yeah, your hair can only go past a certain point when it comes to color. So when you're lightening it, when you're getting highlights or something, once it goes past that 15 minute mark of lightener in your hair, that's like, you know, a scary little spot to be in because your hair can only take so much lightener before it decides to and break off. As for heat damage, you guys can control heat damage. Just lessen the amount of times you use heat, try heatless curls or like heatless ways to style your hair because in the long run, it helps a ton, a ton. So like I said, if you want any help with that, if you're trying to fix that or overcome it, first of all, heat protector because a lot of people I know do not use heat protector when straightening their hair or blow drying or anything with heat. And that's, come on. Anyways, second of all, some people like to use that little blow dry brush, you know, the Revlon one that, you know, is supposed to work. That will ruin your hair. I have seen a lot of people blow dry their hair with that when their hair is wet. Don't use it when your hair is wet. That's not how that works. Please, it hurts. It hurts our hearts, okay? The way to use that is you wait for your hair to become 80% dry and then you go in and you blow dry it. But if your hair is wet and you're using that, the heat that comes off of the bristles is destroying your hair strand because your hair is not dry yet. That's why we use regular blow dryers with regular round brushes because we can control where the heat of the blow dryer goes. Let's say you have some hair, okay? This little thing is your hair, and this part is the brush, and you're going through with the brush, okay? Your blow dryer, which is right here, will always be a few inches away from that brush and your hair in that brush. But with the blow dryer brush, it's together. So you can't control the amount of heat that's going on your hair, and because of that, 
those brushes tend to be on really high settings and since they're on really high settings, it breaks your hair while going through or it makes split ends. So don't use the blow dry brush, please, unless your hair is almost dry, then go through and use it. If you want any help with these, like heat damage or color damage, bleach damage, whatever, anything with damage to your hair, consider using Olaplex. It's pricey, but listen, you do not pay for quantity, you pay for quality. And a little goes a long way anyways. Like the smallest amount makes a humongous amount of difference. The third thing is you cut it too often. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, you have to trim your hair, but not too much. Hair only grows half an inch every month. So if you cut more than that every two weeks, it's gonna feel like your hair isn't growing, which it is, but you're cutting off so much that it's not going past that length. So in my personal preference, this isn't everyone's, I suggest waiting two to three months and you know, once you go and get your hair cut, you cut off a fourth of an inch, okay? Only if you're trying to grow your hair out. The fourth reason is not getting the nutrients your body needs in order for your hair to grow. Now I've said this before, but it's true, so true. What you put into your body will show through your hair. Your diet plays, your diet play, uh, your diet plays, surprisingly, no, not surprisingly. Your diet plays a really big role in your hair and the health of your hair. And also water, drink a lot of water because your hair needs water. <laughs> Think of your hair like a plant. You need to water it, you need to give it the nutrients it needs. Maybe you're missing some vitamins or protein. Eat a lot of protein. Try to get as much protein as you can because majority of your hair is made out of protein. And the fifth reason is, this is probably an obvious one, not so much of an obvious one, um, there could be underlying health issues. Things like thyroid disorders, anemia, can play a big role in your hair. Also, pregnancy influences your hair so much, so, so much. And I've heard from a lot of people that, you know, when you go in for your checkups or whatever, their doctor doesn't really tell them about the hair loss that's gonna come after delivery. Now, when you're pregnant, your hair doesn't shed as much hair as it would, you know, when you're not pregnant. So it holds on to the hair that you grow throughout the pregnancy. Once you deliver, your body's gonna let go of all the hair that you would have shed over the last nine months. So it seems like a lot is happening, you're losing a lot of hair, but it's just the amount of hair that you would have lost in the last nine months. Trying to take as much collagen or biotin can help. And number six that a lot of people miss out on, a lot, is your scalp isn't in the best condition for hair growth. I see a lot of people never ever clarifying their scalp or detoxing. You guys, <laughs> it is so important because every single time that you wash your hair and you add on product, add on product, it's always going to build product buildup. And if you have product buildup on your scalp, it's gonna block your hair growth. It's not in suitable condition for hair to grow. So what you need to do is you need a detox and you need to clarify. So invest in a clarifying shampoo because you guys, your scalp will feel fresh. It'll feel like it's breathing. It'll feel so much better, so much better. And yeah. Anyways, other than detoxing your scalp and clarifying your scalp, scalp massages are also really good, preferably four minutes long. So the reason I'm saying this is because scalp massages can stimulate hair growth by providing blood circulation to the scalp. And we need blood circulation to the scalp, scalp, scalp. And we need blood circulation to the scalp in order for our hair to grow. The seventh reason is you're using the wrong regimen. Now, this is a big part. Actually, all of these are really big parts, but this is one of the biggest parts. The products that you use matter. Drugstore hair products are not gonna give you the same outcome as professional hair products can. What you put in your hair will show. You can't expect a $5 shampoo to work exactly the same as a $50 shampoo. You're paying for the quality and the health of your hair rather than just a quick fix. 
Hair care should be like skincare. So for example, when you're doing your skincare, whatever, you know, you cleanse, you tone, you put in on all your creams and your treatments, and then after everything, you moisturize. It's kind of the same for hair. You know, you detox, you clarify first, then you go in with your regular shampoo, your regular conditioner. After that, you put in a mask, your leave-in. Once you're done with that, and you've already put your leave-in in, then you can style. So your regimen is a really big deal. <laughs> the eighth reason could also be due to stress. And I know you guys don't wanna hear that because it's really hard to relieve stress. <laughs> What stress does, it, it can push your hair into the resting phase, the antigen phase, and that can cause premature shedding of that hair strand. And the bad news is, is that you can't produce a new hair strand during the resting phase. So basically just try like having self-care days, go on a walk, read a book, spend some time to yourself, just try and take care of yourself and do anything that you can that you know for a fact is gonna release your, your stress. Yeah. The ninth reason is your hair is dry. If your hair isn't moisturized or you're not hydrating it, it becomes really dry. And what happens when it becomes dry is that split ends start to form. And what split ends do is over time, if you don't take care of the split ends, it's gonna travel up your hair strand and split apart that strand. So that causes breakage and a lot of unwanted frizz. So the way you can help that is, you know, just kind of hydrate it. <laughs> just hydrate it. <laughs> Use leave-ins, do hair masks, do anything you can to put some moisture back into your curls, especially for curly hair, because curly hair is very dry naturally. Now, this can be different with wavier textures or looser curl patterns. Not everyone's hair is dry, but with tighter curls, your hair is dry, so moisturize. Number 10, the last one is you're not protecting your hair while you're sleeping. I know, I know. How do you protect your hair while you're sleeping? Well, that's a good question. Most people will get cotton pillowcases to sleep on. And what cotton does is it causes split ends and produces more frizz. So your best friend in the entire world that is gonna make a big difference without you realizing it until the last moment is using either silk or satin pillowcases or a bonnet. You know, a bonnet if you move too much. I use a pillowcase because I'm pretty, I'm pretty good about it. But that's gonna be your best friend because it's not gonna cause breakage, it's not gonna cause frizz, it's soft on the hair and it's not rough at all. Okay guys, so that was it for this video. Those were the 10 reasons that I have, that I've learned throughout my experience. And I hope you guys carry some of the things that I told you with you and you change it up a little because it'll make a big difference. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want any more tips or tricks or any more advice on how to care for your hair. Um, yeah, I'm here, just ask. Just ask and I'll deliver. Anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.